Amen, 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 amen. Blessings and glory, hallelujah, wisdom, thanksgiving, ah, oh, no. Power and mind be unto the God forever and ever. Amen. I've seen, see the victory of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I have seen, seen the victory of Jesus. Glory be to God. I have seen, I have seen, oh, seen the victory of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I have seen, oh, seen the victory of Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen, 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 blessings and glory, oh yes, it's on Thanksgiving, ah, oh no, oh no, power and mind, be unto our God forever. I ever Amen. I begin to worship God this morning and magnify His name. Without any doubt, our God is good. Without any iota of doubt, God is good. He's good. He's kind. There is nothing we compare to Him. He is a good God. Wonderful to be praised. Let's give Him glory this morning. Let's magnify His name. Is what we praise is what to be glorified. Our God is good. Blessed be His name. Blessed be His name. Glory to Him forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to Him forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory, honor, and adoration be to Him alone in Jesus' mighty name. Please worship Him. Let us magnify Him. Let us adore Him for the great thing He's doing. Oh, it can only be Him on our side. That we are alive and well to this time, it can only be Him. He kept us, He preserved us. He kept you, brethren, He preserved you. He kept you and your family. He kept you and your spouse. He kept you and the children. He kept you and your entire household. It can only be Him. Let us magnify His name. Let adore Him. Let give Him praise. He keep you, He preserve your way. It can only be him. He has beautiful things ahead of you. Wonderful, wonderful promises ahead of you. Giving glory, giving honor. Thank him for the privilege of seeing a new month. At the beginning of a new month, it can only be him. From January to this time, it is only God. Many that we began together are gone now. Many that we began together are tired now. Many that we began together are no longer alive. But here we are, alive, me and you. It can only be him. Let us magnify his name. Let's bless him. Let's honor him. Our God is good. Our God is kind. Hallelujah to him alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah to him alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah to him alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to him forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank him and magnify him. Thank him and magnify him. Thank him and magnify him. Honor to him and glory to him. Bless him, brethren. Bless him, brethren. Bless him, brethren. For a new start of a new day, a new start of a new month, it can only be God. Hallelujah to him. Thank you for our nation. Thank you for the land. Thank you for your family. Thank you for everything he's doing in our life. Every good thing he's doing. Every great thing he's doing. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the great and wonderful thing you're doing in our life. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. We appreciate your goodness. We appreciate your mercy and your love. Thank you for this family. This 
family of God, praying for them for your group. Thank you for the beautiful thing you are doing in our life, for testimonies and for empowering our amen. We are not saying amen in even whenever we say amen, we know demon trembles and God is glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. We appreciate you for making amen to be our power. We appreciate you for making amen to be our sword. We appreciate you. Our confidence and our state. We appreciate you that anytime and every time we say amen, we always see victory. We always experience victory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. We are very grateful. We are very grateful. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Please magnify him and adore him. Thank him and worship him. Thank him and worship him. Thank him for how he has kept all this far. Thank him and bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Father. We appreciate you. 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 Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being good to us. Please, thank you for being good to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worship. No matter how hard or bad it may, you may, you may think it is. Yet, if you look back very carefully, you will know that God has been good to you. I'm telling you the truth. He has been good to each and every one of us. That we are alive is because it's good to us. Not because you have done anything special. Because it's good to us. That we are not being kidnapped. We are not taking advantage over. The enemy did not rob us of our goodness, of our mercy, of our children. They are not robbed of our players. Those that are going through this, they know what it means. But God's mercy has prevailed over our life. Just small prayer and God is answering us. Mm. And they doing us good. And they doing us marvelous things. I see we are praying that much. But just his mercy we are enjoying. Our young ones are, are healthy and, and alive and healed. Our children are alive. Our young, our elderly one, they are doing well. Even we that are of middle ages, married men and women, God is helping us. It can only be him. This God has been good. Forget that we don't have money. Forget there's no this, there's no that. Things are not going this way, are not going that way. But if you look very carefully where you will know God has been good to us. Our children are getting admission. Just in the last two or three weeks, our children has called me and have congratulated some. We just got admission, you know, into universities. Our children are doing well and things are going on around us. Even though we may not have been the way we wanted it to be, but the truth of the matter is our God is good. Can just echo that back to him and say, Father, we know you, I know you are good. Indeed, you are good to me. You are good to my family. You are good to my household. In our head, you can see your hand. In our build, our, our academies, you can see your hand. In building our career, you can see your hand. Even in eating, can we even explain how we eat? Can we explain how money comes to our way? Come our way? Can we explain how money comes to our pocket? Can we even can explain what we spend in a month? How they are even higher than what we earn sometimes? It can only be you. It can only be you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We appreciate you, Father. We thank you. Please thank you. Please thank you. Indeed, He has been the one providing for us. He has said, We be with us, are going up and are coming. He's doing it. He said, We bless our store so much. Our a store will never run dry. It's doing it. He said he will keep us and keep our way. It's doing it. Our uh, God indeed is doing great things in our life. Please bless him. Please bless him. Please lift up your heavenly side unto him. Lift up your hand and worship his name. Magnify for that which is doing. Magnify for that which he has done. Magnify for that which you know you will do. Thank you because you are not in darkness. He never allows us to walk in darkness. Bless his name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Every time for bringing light your way, sometimes we are in confusion. And we say that there be lies. And before you know it, light comes. The confusion disappears. Sometimes we are in difficult situations. And we just pray. Sometimes we don't even know what to say. We only say amen and amen. And God intervene all the same. In every way, God has shown himself mighty this year in our life. Every month, new fruit he has fed us with. There's no month that pass in don't have something new to hold on to him for. Sometimes it's even us that doesn't claim to them, doesn't lay claim to them. We forget them or we ignore them 
or we sometimes just get carried away. But as long as we hold on to him, there is no month that has not let us continue. And we have been experiencing them in our life. And that's why we can say thank you, Father. Thank you. Can we explain why we are not sick? Can we explain where we are not admission bed in the one hospital or the other? Can we explain why our health situation is not getting worse? Yes, there will be issues that we are dealing with, but they're not getting worse. They are responding to prayers, and this can only be God. One of our children has been admitted for months, and we are simply praying you, the child is still unresponsive, or the thing is not, it's not, it's not getting better, and the child has missed a whole time not going to school. I've not had any of such in our families. It can only be God, or any of our aged men and women. I mean, say, have your grandma pray for her, or grandpa pray for him for the past one month. He has not been responding very well. None like that. Isn't that God in our life? I'm just please bless him once again. Say that we thank, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We are not taking any of this thing for granted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your goodness and your mercy as it's prevailing over our life. Thank you. Oh, for the mercies of David, we are enjoying. Thank you. For multiple grace. Thank you. Our legs are not tired. Our hands are not tired. We are not dealing with on we are not dealing with uncurable amen that is taking away our heads by and by. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. One of our children is falling sick, too tired to, to go to school or to live a normal life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are very grateful. We are very grateful. We are very grateful. We are very grateful. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Thank you, Holy Spirit for your goodness in our home. In Jesus' mighty name, we are giving thanks. Amen. You know, sometimes in a prayer meeting like this, we on the morning like this, or when we are still doing it at the night, we slept off. We forget or we sleep off. And uh, when the prayers end there, we wake up and say, oh, sorry, I slept off. You slept off because your head is good. There are people that cannot sleep all over the night. You won't remind them to go to fellowship like this. Because they are, already, they are woken up since 2 o'clock. They can't sleep. They are looking for sleep. And they are saying, let me go and pray. Let me go and answer me. And my head will be restored. And I will be able to sleep very well. But ah, it's not like that. We put our head on the pillow and off, we are gone. And at our own time, we stand up again and we are back to the road. And we've forgotten that it's not just us, it's God on our side. Thank you for good sleep every night for you and for your family. There are many women that cannot sleep because their babies are not sleeping. Their daughter or their son cannot find sleep. And therefore, mommy and daddy too cannot sleep. Oh, there are many husbands that cannot sleep. Not because sleep is not coming, but because the wife cannot sleep in the night. There are many wives too that cannot sleep. Not because sleep is not coming, but because the man of the house can't find sleep, is in pain. How will a man go, a woman go to sleep when the husband is in pain? It is not possible. Oh, thank you, because that not have been a lot. None of the children is experiencing pain every night. So much that even if pain cannot sleep, it can be him. One of our young men is experiencing pain. They are getting beautiful and handsome every day. They are not being rejected by their parents. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. This is all we are doing in our life. We appreciate this. For our young men and women in their group, they are doing very well. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for all you are doing for us as a people, as a group. Thank you for this new month. We say, blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want to pray for mercy as we begin this new month. You know, we are going to a part of the year now that it seems the power of darkness are more active and they are looking for who to devour. And if you look around, I'll be hearing news, you know they are already at work. Every night you hear, you hear for one terrible news or the other. But it doesn't matter how sheep those news are, it will never get near us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want to say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. For the rest of this year, I receive mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. For me and for my family, I receive mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. For every living thing in my house and every non living thing you have blessed me with, I receive mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. For my head, I receive mercy. I've been living this year, going through this year healthy. I've been end this year healthy in the mighty name of Jesus. For me, for my wife, for the children, for me, for my husband, for the children, for the entire household, we receive mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I receive mercy. Me to finish where. The power to, to finish well, the grace to finish well, the ability to finish well, 
even this year I received in the mighty name of Jesus. As the year gradually went down, my life did not went down. As the year gradually went down, my head did not went down. As the year gradually went down, my family did not went down. As the year gradually went down, my children head did not went down. As the year gradually went down, my job did not went down. My source of income will not went down. As the year gradually went down, I will not lose my life in the course of it. It shall be well with me in the mighty name of Jesus. I will end this year well. I will end this year well in Jesus' mighty name. I will end this year well in the mighty name of Jesus. I will end strong in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I will not end this year as a weakling. I will end it strong in Jesus' mighty name. Strong in health, strong in finance, strong in my career, strong in my, in my head. In every area, my children shall be strong in the mighty name of Jesus. I will end this year strong in Jesus' mighty name. As I began this year, and I'm going stronger, stronger, and stronger every new month, I will end this year stronger in Jesus' mighty name. My head has been renewed the last month. Last month, the Lord renewed our heads. Therefore, the year, rest of the year, I will end strong in the mighty name of Jesus. My youth has been renewed. My head has been renewed. My life has been renewed. Everything about me has experienced a renewal of youth. Therefore, we end this year you know, strong in Jesus' mighty name. The same for me and for my spouse. The same for me and for the children, for my household, and every member of my household. I will not end this year poorer than I began. I will end this year stronger and richer in Jesus' mighty name. Richer in health, richer in finance, richer in, 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 in knowledge and wisdom, richer in understanding of things, richer all the way in the mighty name of Jesus. I will end this year strong in Jesus' mighty name. I refuse to be a weakling in the mighty name of Jesus. I refuse to be a weakling in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The line between being weak and being strong, just a very small, thin line, easily crossable. But our God has been sustaining us on this side of being strong. The Bible says, with God, there is no shame. And as the year gradually went down, mercy will keep you and keep me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I will not end this year in shame. Amen. Say to yourself, you will not end this year in shame. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I refuse to end this year in shame. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will not end this year in shame. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is written as men that believe in, they shall not be put to shame. out. I will not be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. In my head, I will not be put to shame. In my finance, oh, I will not be put to shame. In my marriage, I will not be put to shame. In my life, I will not be put to shame. As a young person, as the year runs to the end, I will look at my relationship and my life. I will know there has been a distinct difference in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be put to shame. I receive mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We pray, pray for one of our sisters that sent on behalf of the husband that the man has invested to one business and shall see the business not going as planned. And therefore, they need God's intervention as a family. The machine they invested to is misbehaving and it's becoming a source of which money is dripping out of the family small, small. And it's like they are wasting money on it. But I'm going to take intervene and have mercy upon the family, have mercy upon the business, and let it get back to the part of profit again in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for them that God will have mercy upon this household, all the investment to business and into machines to do well, to profit their family. We're not being vain in Jesus' mighty name. We command that machine to go back to the part of profit in the mighty name of Jesus. The machine was bought to make profit. Therefore, we command it to go back to the path of profit in the mighty name of Jesus. We say now, you are now under a new leadership, a new owner, a new family. They begin to work according to the covenant upon that family in the mighty name of Jesus. Go back, machine, to the path of profit in the mighty name of Jesus. We command, we decree, we declare that the machine will go back to the path of profit in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, from now and forth, it will only bring profit and not trouble again in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.
put the prayer for yourself and for every member of, our, of this group that in the rest of the rest of this year we will be on the path of profit in our spiritual life we make profit in our family life we make profit please listen carefully in our family life we make profit in our business that we profit our earth it may profit everything that god has blessed us with we go back to the path of profit in the mighty name of jesus now go ahead and pray that prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That's the year runs to the end, Lord. Amen. Everything about me and everything that God has blessed me with, I command and I demand. I declare, I'm not just asking, I declare that they all go back to the path of profit in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says the earth is for all to profit, and even kings are fed by it. Everything the Lord has blessed me with upon the surface of the earth, I command and I declare to go back to profit in the mighty name of Jesus. So, what a profit. In Jesus' mighty name, my head shall profit, my academy shall profit, my wash shall profit, my family shall profit, my children shall profit. Everything about me shall go back to the path of profit in Jesus' mighty name. I will say none I do this month and this year in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. If everything will go back to the path of profit, it means I will have no loss, no matter how small it may be. Loss of head, loss of grand, loss of facilities, loss of relationship, vital relationship, loss of relationship, loss of job, or loss of any kind. I will not suffer loss in Jesus' mighty name. In, as we are not to the end, I will not suffer loss in the mighty name of Jesus. And on this moment in sports, and for the rest of the year, I will make profit. I will not experience loss in the mighty name of Jesus. I shall not suffer loss. In the mighty name of Jesus, loss shall not be my portion in my body, in any part of my body. I have not suffered loss, either gradual loss or sudden loss. In no, in the mighty name of Jesus, I shall not suffer loss in Jesus' mighty name. I have not seen evil, I have not experienced evil in the mighty name of Jesus. I shall not suffer loss of persons, loss of husband or wife or children. Or any form of person, I shall not suffer loss. Everything and everyone that God has blessed me with shall live and live well in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, for this year, Lord, I will experience gain in and not loss in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Everything that's good and for godliness and for life that God has added to my life this year. I will not suffer loss of any one of them. In any way, I have lost it before. I restore them back in Jesus' mighty name. Everything is good for life and for godliness. Everything is good for profit and for gain. Either spiritual or physical, emotional or materials, psychologically or maritally. In any way, in any form, the Lord has added to me in this year everything good for life and for godliness. I shall suffer no loss on them in the mighty name of Jesus. We have been delayed. We have experienced loss. I declare that be restoration now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that be restoration in Jesus' mighty name. I refuse to set to get loss. I refuse to experience loss. Either loss of person or individual or material or health. I shall not experience any loss in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for that. No loss, no loss. No loss of any kind in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You know, God can restore our losses for us. We have been wasting money in this particular area. And you feel I'm wasting money in this area. Like our brother, our mommy sent prayer request. She felt we are losing money in this area, and it's not good. And say, Father, intervene. And I know God has intervened already in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That machine will be to make profit Amen. and gain for nine sports in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You need to pray for yourself. Anyway, I've suffered loss in this year. Father, I stopped fourfold in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I restore back every loss fourfold in the mighty name of Jesus. From now, in any way, in any form, myself, my wife, my family, my household, this meeting, this prayer prayer meeting, and every member thereof or any family in this meeting, I suffer any form of loss this year. We restore back hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus. Fourfold in Jesus' mighty name. We restore back fourfold in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare fourfold restorations in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Father, have mercy on me. In any way, my has been the reason for the loss. Have mercy on me in the mighty name of Jesus. Is it my actions? 
Is it my way of talking? Is it my way of doing things? Whatever I've done or I've, I'm doing that may have been the reason for the loss I've suffered in my head or in my life. Lord, I pray for restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be restoration in Jesus' mighty name. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Wash me clean by the blood of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Is there any sin? Is there any way I've been behaving? Is there any way I've been talking? Is there anything I've been involving myself with that will be standing as a barrier for my making progress? Or I'll be standing as a barrier and is the reason for my loss. The Bible says the edge will be broken, the serpent will bind. Every broken edge I repair by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And to pray for yourself that in any area of my life where there have been broken edge, I cover those every brother of Jesus Christ and I cover everything and bless with my children, my spouse, my business, the machine, the everything I have in my house, my car, the land I build my house where I'm living upon, everything, even upon the bed I sleep, upon the lintel of my house, upon my roof, everything that God has blessed me with, I call the brother of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. We are ever in all this in our mission, or have not even mentioned. There is an edge that is broken, and the enemy is using that place as a as his foundation, a foundation to step into my life. I cover all the of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive mercy of God this morning. I receive forgiveness of God. We have wrong, we have sinned in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say the brother of Jesus Christ, cover all edge that is broken in Jesus' mighty name. I repair all broken edge in the name of Jesus Christ. I repair all broken edge in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We say, everyone answer prayer that God will pass the year and also the end. We declare their answer in Jesus' mighty name. Anyway, there is delay. And everyone that is saying, Lord, when will you do this for me? Every young man and young woman that is saying, when will my own spouse come? Or every married person that is saying, when will the children come? Or when will there be peace in the house? Whatever the case may be, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let there be intervention in Jesus' mighty name. Let them tell you, the mighty name. Every unanswered prayers, let there be answered to them in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please pray for our pregnant women. We have had a lot of many women giving birth this year already that we're praying for. And there are saying one or two that are still trusting God for safe delivery this year and uh, some in the coming year. But whatever the case may be, Lord, please. Grant them say delivery in the mighty name of Jesus. You are given the part to conceive, the part to carry out the, the conceptions, the pregnancy, and to bring forth to maturity, and in their own time to bring forth to birth. Lord, give unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Give unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every of our women, we pray for every pregnant woman now huh, that they will deliver safely in the mighty name of Jesus. The mother shall be well, and the baby shall be well. There shall be no loss of any kind. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything shall go fine and go well. For all our pregnant women in Jesus' mighty name, as they add days to days and month to month, they shall bring forth safely in Jesus' mighty name. And pray for those that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb that they remember in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone thirsty, everyone trusting, everyone eagerly and say, God, remember me. Lord, remember them in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The Bible says God did not say as he has promised. And he visited her as he has said. Because she too was looking forward to it. Father, we pray for everyone that are trusting you and believing you and looking forward to this answer to their prayers. Either in fruit of the womb or in delivering safely that which they have conceived. You bring everyone to position of conception, to position of delivery, delivery in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And those that are trusting for the fruit of the womb, they shall have it. And your name shall be glorified Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please want to pray for Nigeria. Either you are in Nigeria or overseas, please pray for our country. See, that's a prayer request. You pray for the country where you are too, because God is blessing that country that you might be at peace. But please pray for Nigeria as well this morning. That God will intervene upon the matter of Nigeria. If you have been looking carefully, you know this this nation is confused. Everything is in confusion. Everything from government policy to happiness around. We pray against kidnappers sometimes. It seems as if they went down. It's as if they are picking up against the year and also the end. 
and to pray that God intervene in this country. Put an end to every form of killings and disturbance in the mighty name of Jesus, troubles in the in the politics, in political atmosphere, kidnapping and kidnappers, ritual killings and here and there, all the trouble here, fear of of, of terrorism here and there. Lord, intervene, matter of Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus. Intervene, matter of Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus. Intervene, matter of Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus. Intervene, the matter of Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus. Intervene, the matter of this country in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't be silent about Nigeria, Lord. Intervene, intervene. Let your will be done in this country. Intervene, in Jesus' mighty name. Intervene, every troubled waters upon in our land. Let there be peace in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone troubling our water, trouble them in Jesus' mighty name. Every political leaders, every power troubling our leaders, troubling our country, troubling our waters. Trouble those troubles in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You know, God, are you troubling the trouble of Israel? Every trouble of Nigeria, God will trouble them in Jesus' mighty name. I said, for that, that prayer, I said, for that trouble, all our troublers in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone's trouble in this country. Every our problem are attached to one person or the other. Lord, trouble our troublers in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep them busy that they have no time for us again. Keep them busy. Let them not have no peace in their home. Keep them busy in the mighty name of Jesus. Trouble everywhere, trouble us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The Bible says, the kingdom of our God, I mean, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. We declare that the kingdom of Nigeria is now the kingdom of our God and of his Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And if the danger countries has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ, then the will of God must be done. The Bible says, Jesus said in himself, say, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Which means what makes heaven to be the kingdom of God is that the will of God is done in heaven. That's why it's the kingdom of God. Wherever his kingdom is, his will must be done. And if we are declare, and we are still declaring that the Nigeria, this is our Nigeria, this is our land has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare it so, we say so, that Nigeria has become the kingdom of our God and of, our, and of his Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare for you, Nigeria, that become you are the kingdom of our God and of his Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. We submit you on the altar of sacrifice for our God in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. We we'll pray for Nigeria. Yesterday I was in a meeting and we are, and we pray for Nigeria. And somebody, and they one of the prayer that God should choose for us in this next election. And I was about praying that prayer, but God said, "Don't pray that prayer. Please listen carefully to me." I was about praying that prayer. God choose for us in the next election who will lead us. God just told me, man, hearing I hear it carefully. Remember, I've told you so many things about Nigeria here. Many have not come to pass yet, but they will come to pass. They will come to pass unless if God had not spoken it. They will come to pass. So, what about praying that prayer? God, give us a leader that we lead us, help us to choose our right. I just say, man, hearing very clearly, don't pray that prayer. That how will you choose a right between two bad options? You are given two bad options, or three or four bad options. You know all the options, either four or five, they are all bad. And you are praying, God, help me to choose a right. How do you choose the right among the bad? It's difficult and it's not possible. And Lord say, rather pray, let your will, let my will be done. I learned that for the first time yesterday night, yesterday night, yesterday evening, when I was in that meeting. Everybody was praying, God, help us to choose the right in the next meeting, help us to choose the next, in the next election. God said, Kenny, that's all the prayer you will pray. Pray that my will be done. How will you choose a good thing out of, how will you choose a, a good apple out of, out of four bad ones? It's not possible. And when an apple is bad, it is bad. And therefore pray to choose a right one among four or five bad options. It's a wasted effort in prayer. But we say, Lord, let your will be done. How it will be done, we don't know. So please join me and say, Father, upon Nigeria, let your will be done. In this next presidential election, let your will be done. 
As the year runs to the end, let your will be done. As we begin a new year, let your will be done. In the political atmosphere of Nigeria, let your will be done. In our finance, let your will be done. Upon this country, let your will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus. How you will do, we don't know. We are confused as human beings. We are put before us choices that we cannot even pick from. Lord, let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your will be done upon this country in Jesus' mighty name. Let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Upon Nigeria, let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know, we don't know how you will do it, but you are God. There's nothing you cannot repair. Lord, let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please, anytime I pray for Nigeria, that should be your prayer. You cannot choose a good apple from four bad ones, or from five bad ones, or six bad ones. That has been the problem of Nigeria so far. We are given a set of bad leaders, and we are asked to pick one. And that's why we have never made any progress. So please, when you are praying closer for Nigeria, don't pray that God will help you to choose right. But pray, let his will be done. If the election we hold, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. But even if it will take place, let his will be done. And it's which shall be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This month, November, is a month of better testimony for you and me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And to claim that for of all, is a month of say my the title this month is my amen, my testimony. We have been saying amen from the beginning of the year. It is time to begin to see testimonies. Last month, the Lord says, renewing our youth. And that has taken place. We will see testimony this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I mean, this month in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Because after God has visited a people, there will be a testimony. When he delivered them from Israel, I mean, from Egypt, and they are going on their way, God gave them a set of rules. He said, you must observe this one every year, Passover, uh, festival of this, festival of that. And if your children ask you, why are we doing this festival, festival? you should tell them, because the Lord delivered us a particular night from our slavery in Egypt, and we are now in our promised land where God has given us. After a deliverance, there should be testimonies. And testimony says, tell your children, when they ask you, this is what God said they will do, and this is what he has done. So this month of November is a month of better testimonies. My amen, my testimony. And so that it be for you and for me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So declare it for nine, for I say this month of November, it's a month of better testimony for me in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a month of better testimony for me in the mighty name of Jesus. For me and my household, in my job, in my household, in my business, in my marriage, even area where I have concluded it's not possible again. <laughs> I have better testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> in my spiritual life, in my spiritual growth, my love for God, understanding the Bible, in everything I do from now and forth, I will experience better testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a month of better testimony for me in Jesus' mighty name. For me and for my household, for me and for my children, for me in everything I do, in my head, in my life. It shall be a month of better testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please take this one for very seriously. It's very important. None of these top things I said are my own coin. I don't coin them. I'm not that smart. No, no, I don't coin them. I always say the way I, I was told. And if you believe, you will see it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want me to show that you believe that you put your mind at it. Just this morning, we pray for one of our brothers and sisters that said, he bought a machine, but he misbehaving. If I'm her, I put my mind to it that for now I will have a better testimony on that machine. Oh, this child from the beginning of the year to now, this is how I ate or her head has been, or this is how his behavior or her behavior has been. If I'm you, I will put my mind to it for now. We have a better testimony. Oh, my head, I've been struggling with it. My finance, or this area, or that area of my life, it has been struggle and struggle since. But now it's a matter of better testimony. If it's me, if it's I'm you, I will put my mind to it that from now I will be experiencing better testimony. 
just last month, the Lord promised me, I said, I will give you a new, a new youth. For now, I'm putting my mind to it. There will be better testimonies. If you don't put your mind to it, then you may not know this. You have seen it. It's what you put your mind to, you see and you know, and you recognize. So you see for yourself again, once again, in area, I don't know that area, maybe relationship wise. Things have not been improving, but we want it to improve. Maybe academic wise, maybe career wise, whatever area of your life, you know it has not been the way I want it to be. You will declare this aspect from this month. I will put my attention on you because I know there shall be better testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. This month for me and for my household, in every area and for everything. There shall be better testimony for me in the mighty name of Jesus. I will testify before my friend, I will testify before my younger one, I will testify before my spouses, the response, I will testify before my sibling, I will testify to the children, I will testify in the mighty name of Jesus because I'm expecting a better testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. This month, every amen will produce a better testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. In every fear, on in every area, there shall be better testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. I will look forward to them. I will expect them. I will see them. I will experience them in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be testimony of a testimony for me in the mighty name of Jesus. This month, November, I shall I will march gallantly to December with better testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. My neighbor will see it. Oh, my friends shall know about it. In my workplace, they will know something different is happening to this man. In the mighty name of Jesus, everyone that have known me this thus far, they will know I have a better testimony and spot. In the mighty name of Jesus, in every area, in everywhere, I declare this month, remember, my month of better testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Beginning of the month, be conscious about this personally. If I have sent to you, maybe a uh, email you sent to me, Happy New Month, and I replied to you, I consciously insert into it that it's a month of better testimony. I'll be conscious about it and I'll be expecting it. What about spiritual things that if you are not conscious of it, you don't see it? Any prayer you are praying, either for career, either for and betterment in the family. You are praying for your wife to get better. If you don't expect it, you never get better. You are praying for your husband to behave well. If you don't expect it, you never, you never do, do it. Any prayer you pray, put on the wound to get prosper in your life, whatever thing you are doing. If you don't look forward to it, you don't see it. Because it's when you are looking forward to it, your spirit is attached to it. Your mind is attached to it. Everything about you is working towards it. And when God sees that, he knows it. Therefore, I will consciously be attaching myself in my spirit, person, in mind to it. And when I give people, I say, it's a much better testimony. I give them like that. And try it for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I say once again for me, for me, it's a year of better testimony. I mean, it's a month of better testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. This month of November is my month of better testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. With every amen, every victory shall follow in the mighty name of Jesus. Every amen shall attract victory and testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not struggle in vain this month. I will not struggle in vain this month. It's a month to begin to read the reward of prayer from January to this time in the mighty name of Jesus. When a man has a, a planted in January, then by November it should be harvesting. It's a month of harvest for me in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be a month of our best and better testimony for me in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are giving a prayer, all manner of prayer this year. Sometimes I go back to God and listen, and I wonder, and they are wonderful prayers. They are investment, they are plantings. And any farmer that plants and is not looking forward to harvest is wasting his time. And that's why we keep cultivating, we keep doing everything we are doing so that the harvest might come. And if you are planted in January, by November, you should be having harvest. And naturally, this is a season of harvest. Go and see it, even the literal world. It's a season of harvest in your career. At this time, I'll be expecting some allowance from your office. 
allowance of home of others and some months, uh, some, some, some office say I have been paid, they paid 13 months. Farmer will be looking forward to harvest. I have some a, a farm, a small farm. I'm looking forward to begin to harvest from this month. It, as it is in the spirit, so it is in the physical. If in the physical, you are expecting your office to reward you with your service for the year and to pay you some little allowances as a thank you reward, or in the office, they even give you a award at the end of the year. If physically speaking, you are expecting that from where you are working, why are you not expecting the same thing over the prayer you are praying in the course of the year? We receive not because we ask not. And if you are being investing into God, God is not unfaithful to give all the reward of our prayers. But many times we don't even expect answer to the prayers ourselves. And when you are not expectant, sometimes you don't receive. You don't. The Bible says God at a point called them, the angels, and they bring the flask of prayers, the vase of prayers before him, and they open it. And the, the prayer came out as a sweet fragrance before him. And they are, it is said they are the prayer of saints. They come as a memorial before him, and he began to answer them. This is the thing that happens. There's a time for planting. There's a time for harvest. If you plant, but you never expect harvest, how do you get results? And that's why this month, consciously put your mind to it. That's the beginning of better harvest for me in Jesus' mighty name. This month of November is my beginning of harvest. Better harvest, better testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Every investment in physical, every investment in financial, every investment emotionally, every investment in my spiritual life in prayers, every investment, everything I put my money in this year or put my investment, put my prayer this year, this is a season of, of reward in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a season of reward. The Bible says, we are, shall reap my reward if I faint not. I have not fainted to this time in prayer. Therefore, reward is bound to happen in the mighty name of Jesus. I will receive my reward in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a season of harvest and better testimony for me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And that reminds me that by Monday, by God's grace, we are beginning, our, I mean, my Monday morning, 5 a.m., we are beginning a big event for November. My amen, my testimony, please be back a part of it. And by this Friday, we'll be starting a new series. I'll be taking it myself by God's grace. And hopefully, I'll be involved one or two persons too along the line to, in the, to see the relevance of spiritual gift. I've said this for the beginning of the group that we talk on this topic. I've been seeing it. And somehow, I've never been able to do it until the Lord inspired me to do it now. And the season is here, and the better it will be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I got Friday, Friday, 8 p.m. Join me to begin the study on relevance of spiritual gifts in homes, in marriages, and in families. You'll be surprised how blessed you will be if you attend, and how mightily this title will be for us in Jesus' mighty name. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 17. Habakkuk 3, quickly read verse 17. Habakkuk 3. Quickly, quickly, time is going. I read verse 17. He say, although the fig tree shall not blossom, Abaco 3, 17, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fish shall ye no meat. And that's the experience in the physical, humanly speaking, and that, that is all over the place. The floor shall be cut off from the feed, and that shall not be heard. In the store, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. You know why? Because all what I've done, my own little way, this thing are not there because I've been investing, I've been planting, I've been hoping, investing in faith, investing in belief, hoping for a better testimony. And now, though they are not there yet, I will rejoice. Because I know God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. The Bible says that must come to God, must believe and know that He is, He exists, He's always there. And because He exists, He is, is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. The news may not get better that you hear around you. And it is written that a thousand may fall by your left hand and ten thousand by your right hand. But shall not come near you. So the news might not get better. Just last week there was a news 
or news over and over several countries in one Nigeria that have been, that will be terrorism attack in Abuja, and everybody was afraid of living in Abuja. Although the news may be bad, it may not get better. But for me and for you, our protection and our provision will get better and stronger because we believe, and therefore we rejoice. And that's why the joy of the law will be our strength. So even though all these things may be there, even though all this news may be palatable, even though all the feeling may not be palatable, even though the prayer may seem yet to be answered, even though what I pray, I'm praying to get done or to get improved on has not been there yet, yet I will rejoice. I told you, I tell you young people that are expecting to get engaged or get married, say rejoice, be beautiful, be happy. Nobody wants to marry an ugly woman, haggard, unhappy, looking, tattered. Dress yourself fine. Be happy as a young man, as a young woman. Very soon, God will bring you your own way. Rejoice. The same thing for the married one. If the woman is always not happy, not uh, always frowning her face, the husband will not be willing to come home and have whether be peace in the house. And the man is the other way around, is never happy, always frowning whenever he's coming in. If we enter like this, the old house becomes sour because daddy has come. Instead of daddy coming in and the old house rejoice, thank God my husband is back, or that is bad, but the children they say that. But instead, you know what happens on men? They come back home because the business is not good, because they are praying and they're not seeing answer yet, because there's been delay here and there. They come home, their face looks sour. And their present get, get look uh, this sour. And immediately they enter the house like this, everything in the house becomes sour. Every mood that was happy. And it, before they came, the children are running around. Mommy is happy. But as soon as the man enter, everybody gets sour, gets quiet and sorrowful. If that is you, don't expect any answer from God. Because it says, I will rejoice. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Where there is no joy, there is no expectations, there is no faith. One of the strongest weapons of the believer is joy. Because where there is joy, you are telling God, I'm expectant. Where you don't rejoice, you don't expect. And where you don't expect, you don't have hope. Where there is no hope, there is no faith. And without faith, God cannot do anything. So I will rejoice. I may not have been hearing the good news yet. All the news, and I may not be as palatable as it may be, but I choose to, to rejoice. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and we made my feet, to, my feet like his, his feet, and we make me to walk upon my high places. And before you know it, I'll be strong. But the beginning of it that I will rejoice. When my husband see me, he will see joy. When my children see me, they will see joy. When my wife see me, they will see joy. When my neighbor see me, they will say, This man is always happy. It may even be thinking I'm very rich, that I have all the money, all the food is in the house. But no, it's because I refuse to rejoice, especially when there are matters I cannot control. If there are things I can control by working hard, I will work hard. They take a control by going to a particular place and get it done, I will go there. But as long as there are things I cannot control, I cannot control a man coming my way as a woman, I cannot control my seeing myself, seeing the right woman at the right time, that is God. I cannot control myself having the children as a woman that is delaying in fruitfulness. I cannot control myself getting the job as a man, as looking for the job. There are things I cannot control. I can only try my best. If the work is not going fine, and I see the profit are not coming in. I can't control that. I can only try my best. What do I do? I rejoice as I'm doing my best. And as long as I'm putting yourself, your habit into place, even though the stock may still be empty, the fig tree may not blossom, the flowering may not begin because there's no flowering, there's no harvest, and there's no fruiting. Talk of less of harvest. The flowering may not be there yet, and the fruit may not be forming shape yet, but yet I will rejoice. I know my labor is not in vain. The Bible says that I come to God must believe that He is, and that is the word that I do that diligently seek Him. I will continually diligently seek Him because I know my labor is not in vain. I will do my part. 
I will give, I will trust. I know my labor is not in vain. And one way you can know you are, you are rejoicing and you are trusting is by giving. Giving and receiving, I talk more on this in course of the week. Giving and receiving are the simple law of life on everything. You are praying for the fruit of the womb. Why not give to those that have their own and rejoice with them and play with their children and see God not honor your own? Oh, you are praying that your business will get better. Why not support those that are having similar business and they are doing well and see how you can learn from them? You give to receive everything in life is about giving and receiving. What we are doing is giving. You give your time to invest in prayer. You give your energy to invest in prayer. You, you sacrifice your sleep to invest in prayer. You sacrifice your fear to have faith and hope in God. These are giving. You put in your money where there is need for it. You put in your strength that is need for it. These are giving. Before you know it, adverse is coming. Nobody invests in God and will not see results. Nobody. Sometimes we give our tithe, give our offering, but we don't expect anything in return. You don't invest in God and go and sleep. You even if you put your money, I don't know that the moment was, oh, my mommy was telling me, I put my business, my money to so, so, so thing, and it's not coming back, and we begin to pray. If you put your business, your money to a business, and not coming, I want to pray and ask for, for return. Why? Because you are expecting the same thing in everything about God. Once we invest, expect results. And we have them the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And one way to know you are indeed expecting, you are rejoicing. Because you know my time, your time will come. Say to yourself, my time will come in the mighty name of my Jesus. I will rejoice. My time will come in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not bury myself in sorrow. Bury my head in sorrow. Just because I've not seen results yet. I will not do that in the mighty name of Jesus. I will rejoice. I know my time will come. Oh, I know my marriage is coming as a young person. I know as a married person, the children will come. I know as a, as a mature person, the job will come. I know my investment in finance will come back. I know my children, they will do well. I know I will be healthy. I will end this year healthier than I began. I know it shall be well with me. Despite the news I see around, despite the things I hear on radio or in television, I choose to rejoice in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the band. The, my store may not be full of happiness yet, but I know I will rejoice. I choose to rejoice. Enjoy his hope. Enjoy his love. Enjoy his giving willingly. Enjoy his faith. Nobody has faith without rejoicing. I choose to rejoice in the mighty name of Jesus. I choose to rejoice in the mighty name of Jesus because I know God will reward me. My God is a faithful rewarder. I know my happiness is now here. I know this month is a month of harvest for me, a month of better testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, I will rejoice in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I leave you with this this morning. Now you go ahead today and rejoice. Every day of this month, please be rejoicing because the harvest is here. This is the month of better testimony. And that will be your lot in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As we rejoice, we have hope. Amen. As you rejoice, your hope will turn to faith. Amen. And your faith will be not be denied. Amen. Because the Bible says, that put their trust in him, they shall not be ashamed. And our God is a faithful rewarder. Amen. He will reward your faith. And every harvest you have done, I mean, every investment you have done from the beginning of this time, this year, in money, in giving, in, in offering, in giving your time, in prayer, everything will come together Amen. in one. And they will turn to harvest for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of this family, family of God. Strong as wise as Solomon, joint here with Jesus, heaven home. I'm so glad with this family, family. Please, I beg of you, put your mind to these things. Expectant, be expectant. Keep hope alive, rejoice in him. God will never turn his face on those that put their trust in him. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. May God shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May God honor your faith, Amen. honor your hope in him, Amen. honor your trust in him. As we rejoice in him, 
even though the news are not palatable yet, even though you are not seeing the results yet, the harvest yet, but just because you know this is time for harvest, you will harvest, you will have enough and sufficient and to spare in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God, the faithful rewarder, will reward your faith and honor your trust in him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I live with his joy in the mighty name of Jesus. May the joy of the Lord fill your heart, fill your spirit. May your presence in your home bring joy in Jesus' mighty name. I say it again, may your presence in your family, in your neighborhood, in your office, bring joy and not sourness in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And for me, they see you, they will see joy. They will see hope. Amen. They will see faith. Amen. And they don't longer be asking you, madam, or that they was wrong with you. That's no longer you for nine and You will rejoice in your God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And God will honor your joy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And because a year of um, amen, what do we say? Amen is my palm, amen is my song. We come and get victory in prayer, amen is my song. Whenever I say amen, hallelujah, in the name of both for name, be more tremble and God is glorified. Amen. He is my stay. But just remember, I didn't say this. When God puts his name upon our children, either the one in your womb or the one you are here to conceive, and I know you will conceive. May God put your hand, his hand upon them, amen. all your children, and bless them in Jesus' mighty name. And one last amen. One to go. Amen. amen. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Make it over. Whenever I say amen. amen. In the name of both our names, the mountain tremble and God is glorified. Amen. Is my stay. Amen. God bless you.